The 1950 World Cup had an immediate impact on soccer in St. Louis, and it was also a testament to the quality of St. Louis soccer. The national team included six St. Louisans who were all from the Hill, other than fullback Harry Q, who was from the Carondelet area. In what is now called the Miracle on Grass, the U.S. national team defeated England, who was without a doubt one of the powerhouse teams in the 1950 World Cup. Harry Keough was a member of the U.S. team. We still were feeling pretty good about ourselves because we had really scared the hell out of Spain. You know, and then we had another two and a half days in between in, to play England, so we certainly didn't entertain any ideas we were going to beat them, you know, but we figured we could give them a, you know, a battle for it. And give them a battle they did. In the 37th minute of the match, forward Joe Gachins headed the ball past the England keeper and into the back of the net, putting the U.S. up 1-0. For the rest of the first half and throughout the second half, the U.S. played tough defense, with keeper Frank Borgie making save after save. Defender Charlie Colombo remembered just clinging to the lead, saying, Everybody wants to know how it happened. I just tell them we won because we scored a goal and then tied them up so they couldn't get through us. As the game wore on, the defense continued to stand strong, and Borgie made diving saves constantly, tipping balls over the net, and even making a crucial save on a penalty kick, preserving the victory. England could do no more. The match ended 1-0, and the shock result travelled around the world to be met with disbelief. I met with St. Louis Soccer Hall of Fame President Jim Leaker, and I asked him, why is this World Cup so important for the history of St. Louis soccer? True history of the 1950 World Cup team, when Mike Summersby, who was a national player for England, and he's, the, he's one of the vice presidents of Manchester City, when they came to St. Louis to play, and he was in a booth right next to us, mm -hmm. I said, Mr. Summersby, that gentleman right there in the red coat, that's Frank Borgie. I didn't have to go any further. He says, can I meet him? He knew, he knew who Frank Borgie was. And the first words that came out of his mouth were, everybody, everybody that grows up playing soccer or football in England knows the name Frank Borgie, knows the name of, you know, probably every, the, the 12 players that were on that team that, that played that game. And that, that was very, you know, emotional for me because, you know, you don't get that opportunity too much to be a part of history like that. You know. The 1950 World Cup was an excellent chance for the city of St. Louis to showcase its homegrown talent. The success of the six St. Louisans at a national level was an excellent example of St. Louis soccer tradition and was a crucial part of forming what St. Louis soccer is today. Some of the first soccer leagues in St. Louis were formed by the CYC, or the Catholic Youth Council. This was partly due to the increase in immigration as many Irish, Scottish, and English immigrants came to the U.S., bringing the game with them. As time wore on, districts were formed allowing people to play for their neighborhood or area, rather than their local parish. Around 1970, a man named Dennis Long, who worked for Anheuser-Busch, realized that St. Louis needed a team to represent it, and he started a team known as the Bush Soccer Club. Mr. Long brought in an international coach to teach his new team, and eventually the club grew, adding more youth teams to help develop kids at a younger age. Scott Gallagher Soccer Club was another club that was formed to increase player development. They saw constant success, winning 11 national championships, as well as many regional and state championships. In 2007, the two clubs merged with Metro United Soccer Club to form St. Louis Scott Gallagher, which continues to develop elite talent around the St. Louis area. St. Louis Scott Gallagher is not the only youth soccer club in the area, with other organizations such as Luffy Soccer Club and Sporting St. Louis. To this day, St. Louis remains a national hotbed for developing talent and producing A-list young players. Youth soccer in St. Louis is essential to the popularity of soccer throughout the city. Because children are exposed to the game at a young age, many learn to love the game and they continue to play as they grow up. The strength of youth soccer in St. Louis provides players with quality instruction and a lifelong love of the game, making St. Louis soccer what it is today.
Bob Gwelker, pictured on the left, was a St. Louis University alumnus who officially founded the Billiken soccer team in 1959. Originally, Gwelker had only $200 to start the team, only covering the cost of jerseys. Gwelker was very successful in his tenure as head coach, leading the Billikens to championships in five different years, 1959, 1960, 1962, 1963, and also 1965. Following Gwelker as head coach was Harry Keough, a member of the historic 1950 World Cup team that defeated England. Keough shared much of the same success as Gwelker, winning five championships as head coach. After Keough's time as head coach, the program struggled to find the same success they had seen previously. Although they reached the NCAA tournament many times, SLU was never able to lift the trophy again. This was largely due to other schools beginning to recruit amateur players from St. Louis. Previously, SLU had gotten all the best players from St. Louis, but after their dominant era, they began to lose recruits to other schools. Schools such as Michigan State University and Indiana University often recruited heavily in St. Louis. In their 2021 season, SLU produced one of its best performances in recent memory. They finished the season as A-10 champions while also making it all the way to the semifinal of the NCAA tournament. I sat down to speak with SLU soccer alumnus Bob O'Connell and I asked him, what role has Billiken soccer played in building the soccer culture here in St. Louis? I've heard uh, Bill McDermott say this. Bill McDermott uh, played on some of these teams. You know, it's direct, any, any success U.S. soccer has mm -hmm. had um, I think it is directly r related to, to the success of St. Louis soccer and the Billikens of those 60s and 70s, their 10 national championships. Um, even Coach Yeagley, when he started at Indiana, he came to St. Louis to recruit St. Louis kids. Yeah. Michigan State is, is similar, is currently coached by um, a St. Louis U High alum. Um, St. Louis did it first, really, mm -hmm. and then there's so many other programs that have replicated. You know, we have Hall of Famers in so many era, er, eras like Al Trost and Mike Sorber and today Brad Davis, these guys who, um, you know, even recently St. Louis U just had, a, I believe, four kids drafted, you know, in the Super Draft. Um, it, you know, that's, that's pretty yeah, that's unique. Right. That's pretty unique. Um, no, St. Louis U soccer has always been a big part of – the story of St. Louis soccer, but also nationally. Mm -hmm. After Dennis Long, founder of Bush Soccer Club, retired from Anheuser-Busch in the late 1980s, St. Louis lacked an authoritative figure with the connections and money to bring an MLS team to St. Louis. However, in August 2019, it was announced that St. Louis had finally been given the opportunity to host an MLS team. An ownership group headed by Carolyn Kindle Betts, president of the Enterprise Holdings Foundation, and members of the Taylor family had worked for years to bring a team to St. Louis. Finally, they were successful. The club's name, St. Louis City SC, represents the rich history of the city and the people that live in it. The SC in the name stands for soccer club, but soccer capital as well, attributing to the authenticity and uniqueness of St. Louis soccer. St. Louis was the heart of soccer in the United States, and the factors of the past built St. Louis soccer into what it is today. The accomplishments of those St. Louisans on the 1950 World Cup team, the fundamental beginnings of youth soccer in St. Louis, and the tribulations of Billiken soccer over the years have been crucial to bringing an MLS team to our city. But there is so much more that has built this soccer culture. Today, we as St. Louisans wait with eagerness for the future of soccer in our city, while also looking back on the men and women who failed and triumphed in creating soccer in our city as we see it in the present day.